food uh, in the head vestibule in the reservoir that possesses energy and that possesses pressure energy and uh, by using the dam we are actually storing that uh, water in the reservoir and from the reservoir by using the pen stroke the water is that to flow to the power house power house means in, that is in the turbine section now you can see from the pen stroke while the water is flowing it then passes through one of the nozzle actually the turbine that is being shown here in the nozzle uh, turbine arrangement that specifically uh, resembles with the pelton turbine arrangement because in the pelton turbine arrangement we know that we have that uh nozzle arrangement through which the water is being flown to the power house now the water that is coming out from the pen stroke then it is passes through the nozzle and we know that when any fluid passes through the nozzle where as in the nozzle the cross sectional area gradually decreases then uh, when the fluid flows to the nozzle at the expense of the pressure energy the kinetic energy increases so the pressure energy that causes is Uh, by the water in the reservoir while passing through the nozzle that pressure energy is being converted into kinetic energy the whole pressure energy is being converted to kinetic energy and by this high amount of kinetic energy the water strikes the blade which are mounted over the periphery of the runner so when the water with that high energy or high kinetic energy strikes the blades then the runner starts to rotate and when the runner starts to rotate along with that the shaft which is being connected at the center of the runner that also rotates and after striking the runner blades the water uh, goes to the tail rest level so in this way in general a hydroelectric power plant works now uh, some terms are being mentioned in the figure you can see the gross head the net head okay now we know when the water flows Through the pen stroke nozzle and any other passages and conduit, then obviously due to the friction effect, some energy will get lost. Then you can say that the net head available at the entry of the runner that will obviously less than the gross head that is available when the water is at the uh, reservoir. So we can say the gross head and uh, net head is equal to gross head minus the frictional head loss. Okay. so in this way we can actually uh, in this we can uh, explain the hydroelectric power plant okay uh, i would rather uh, the participants if we, anyone uh, finds any difficulty in understanding anything or want to ask anything then they may interrupt me and ask at any time not a problem let us make it is an in, uh, interactive lecture okay so if you want to ask anything you may ask so uh, this is in gist uh, about the hydroelectric uh, power plant now next uh, is the classification classification of turbines uh, i mentioned in the classification because um, after that only we will have the uh, the uh, we will get have that idea the francis turbine and kaplan turbine those kind of turbines will come under which kind of uh, classification now the classification of turbines may be made uh, based on uh, three categories first one is your based on head then uh, second one is based on the hydraulic action of water and third is your based on direction of flow of water in the runner now based on head uh, that is the head availability okay head availability you may in terms of gross head you may mention in terms of net head uh, either way it is correct so based on head the turbine may be classified as high head turbines medium head turbines and low head turbines now in high head turbines obviously from the name it is evitable that the head availability is quite more and gradually then becomes medium and then low now uh, the turbine explanation just i have made while explaining the hydraulic power plant there we have seen that when the water which is possessing a high amount of pressure energy is passing through the pen stroke then this high amount of pressure energy is converted to kinetic energy while passing through the nozzle so obviously the uh, as uh, more the kinetic energy will be the water will strike the turbine with that high amount of uh, velocity and accordingly the will get, have that uh, high amount of rotation speed of the runner so obviously for that uh, high head will be required if the head is become high then obviously the energy available that will also be higher
so uh, from that we can uh, say that the pelton turbine uh, pelton turbine which required this nozzle arrangement where the water which is coming out from the nozzle striking the blades with a very high velocity requires the maximum amount of head for attaining the maximum efficiency of the turbine so keeping in it mind we can say that pelton turbine is one of the example of high head turbine because high head is required for uh, efficient operation of the pelton turbine next is medium head turbine so in the medium head turbine uh, the example of medium head turbine actually medium and low head turbine both of the turbines uh, uh, reaction turbines come under this category and among the reaction turbines francis turbine is one of the example of medium head turbines and kaplan turbine is one of the example of low head turbine and second is based on hydraulic action of water so hydraulic action that means how the uh, water is actually entering the runner section or in the casing and how the energy is transferring to the casing and how the energy is converting from pressure energy to kinetic energy and which energy is specifically responsible for rotating the runner based on that fact the turbine may be classified as impulse turbine and reaction turbine now uh, impulse turbine so impulse turbine from the name impulse you can understand that fact impulse means impulsive force what is impulsive force if uh, for a short span of time if two body collide with each other and within that short period of time the body is actually exchanging the energy that they are possessing suppose we have that one racket and a tennis ball and tennis ball is coming and striking the tennis ball by step so the high amount of kinetic energy possessing by this ball that is being transferred while within a short period of time that is when the ball and bat is coming in contact so this uh, force employed by the ball to the racket that is known as impulsive force so um, from that uh, uh, concept or from that fact the uh, turbine which runs uh, by the impulsive flow action of the water that comes under the category of impulse turbine and uh, uh, after studying the pelton turbine operation obviously it is more clear to you because in the impulse turbine in the pelton turbine the water jet coming out from the nozzle uh, strikes the blade with a very high kinetic energy that means the impulse force is being transferred from the water to the blade and the blade uh, getting this kinetic energy and starts to rotate about the center so we can say that pelton turbine is known as impulse turbine due to this reason okay so the pelton turbine comes under the category of impulse turbine then uh, coming the reaction turbine now reaction turbine is uh, different from the uh, impulse turbine keep, uh, keeping in the fact that uh, in uh, pelton turbine that is when in impulse turbine the available energy at the entry of the runner the total available energy is in the form of kinetic energy total pressure energy is converted to kinetic energy so kinetic energy is only available at the entry of the runner whereas in reaction turbine at the entry or the inlet of the runner kinetic energy as well as pressure energy both the energies are available and uh, after striking the pelton turbine the water uh, uh, losses its kinetic energy because at the expense of the kinetic energy runner rotates and the water at the atmospheric pressure goes back to the tail risk but in reaction turbine after striking the blades of the runner and after rotation of the runner when the water comes out from the runner section it is possessing both the kinetic energy as well as pressure energy so uh, the energy availability for kind uh, of reaction turbine is kinetic energy pressure energy in both at inlet and outlet and obviously when the water will passes to the runner the kinetic energy as well as the pressure energy both energy will be responsible for the rotation of the runner so the pressure energy will gradually decrease as well as the kinetic energy also now the decrement of pressure or the difference of pressure between the uh, pressure availability at the inlet and outlet that pressure is known as reaction pressure and under after this this kind of turbines are known as reaction turbine 
and Francis turbine, Kaplan turbine, those comes under the category of reaction turbine. And in constructional wise, uh, operational wise, in all cases, uh, in all way, the reaction turbine differs from the impulse turbine. Even uh, the blade shape, even for the casing shape, and the other uh, arrangement, all, for all the cases, uh, this uh, reaction turbine differs from the impulse turbine. And thirdly, uh, based on direction of flow of water in the runner, so based on direction of flow of water in the runner, uh, the turbine may be classified uh, as, sorry, the turbine may be classified as tangential flow turbine, radial flow turbine, axial flow turbine, and mixed flow turbine. So tangential flow turbine, uh, in case of Pelton turbine in the figure, as you have seen, the water jet which is coming out from the nozzle, it is tangentially entering the runner section and striking the blade. So the Pelton turbine comes under the category of tangential flow turbine. So we can say Pelton turbine is a impulse, is impulse high head tangential flow turbine. So Pelton turbine is an impulse high head tangential flow turbine. Next is your radial flow turbine. So when the water will enter in the radial direction, so actually based on the direction of flow, based on the direction of flow, the runner, the turbine and may be classified. Now, radial flow is actually, uh, the example of radial flow turbine is uh, your Francis turbine, but the modern Francis turbine, in such cases, the entry of the fluid and the exit of the fluid, those two directions are different. The water and uh, makes entry in radial direction, but it makes exit in axial direction. There is both directions are mixes up. So uh, modern Francis turbine comes under the category of mixed flow turbine. And axial flow turbine, axial flow turbine, when the uh, water uh, uh, gets entry in the axial direction and also exit in the same direction, then uh, that is in the along the or in parallel direction of the axis of the runner, then it will be known as axial flow turbine and um, Kaplan turbine comes under the category of axial flow turbine. Now, among all those things, uh, other turbines are there, Bunky turbines are there, Plus flow turbines are there, Farnian turbines are there. So many turbines are uh, coming under these uh, examples of all these categories. But among all those turbines, the important turbines which are is necessary to study elaborately. The three most popular kind of turbines are Pelton turbine, Francis turbine, and Kaplan turbine. These are the most popular kind of turbine. Now, Pelton turbine. Uh, I hope uh, you have uh, you know about the working of the Pelton turbine and on. Also, in gist, I've mentioned okay, how, why it is, is it called impulse, uh, why is it called tangential flow turbine, and how it is actually working. So, rather than the, uh, emphasizing on the Pelton turbine. Now we'll uh, start to discuss uh, about the Francis turbine and the Kaplan turbine. Okay. Francis turbine and the Kaplan turbine. So now we'll start our discussion. First is your overview of Francis turbine. Overview of Francis turbine. Actually, this kind of turbine, that is Pelton turbine, Francis turbine, Kaplan turbine, all the names of this kind of turbine, uh, actually the names are after the name of the inventor of this kind of turbine. Okay. So Francis turbine is actually, uh, it was invented by Sir James B. France uh, in Massachusetts, USA. Uh, what happens that he, uh, one, one kind of turbine was available at was known as Boyden turbine and the efficiency was quite low and the space uh, requirement, all those things was quite higher. So keeping in mind the design of that kind of turbine, Francis or Sir James B. Francis, as uh, Sir James B. Francis actually starts to work on the design of that kind of turbine. And after many and many and further experimenting, the Francis developed this mixed kind of flow reaction turbine, which later actually is being accepted in the American standard. And now the um, um, mixed flow modern Francis turbine that we actually uh, are in use, uh, the uh, concept or the main uh, source coming out from the design provided by Sir James Francis. 
now uh, the normal francis turbine which is actually the radial flow francis turbine uh, this francis turbine is an inward flow reaction turbine where the radial uh, inlet uh, the, and the radial discharges outlet now um, and we know these kind of turbines are actually um, a moderate kind of head is required for this kind of turbine and modern francis turbine which is a mixed flow type of turbine there water enters the runner of the turbine in the radial direction and after striking the runner when the runner rotates after that it leaves the runner in the axial direction so be as both kind of directions are being used for this kind of turbine so modern francis turbine is your mixed flow turbine modern francis turbine is your mixed flow turbine here one of the um, figure uh, that is been collected from the internet uh, this figure is uh, giving the overview or a picture view of uh, francis turbine although the different parts are uh, although dif these different parts are not um, uh, clear in this kind of turbine or in this picture so uh, i'll discuss in elaborately in the next picture uh, next slide okay yeah uh, now although this is being discussed already so here uh, the specification of francis turbine specification of francis turbine um, it is a uh, medium height turbine we know it is medium height the head availability is being required of 45 meter to 250 meter and low head turbine you know that is your captain turbine and if the head availability is more than 250 meter then it becomes higher turbine and it is a reaction turbine uh, so in reaction turbine you know both the kinetic energy and positional energy both kind of energies are available at the inlet and outlet so this kind of turbines are known as reaction turbine and uh, mixed flow turbine so based on the direction radial flow reaction axial flow direction so it is known as mixed flow turbine and uh, also one of the specification is medium specific space so medium specific speed, uh, uh, we know uh, specific speed definition. Uh, I think all of you know that specific speed, specific speed is, uh, just uh, wait a minute. Okay, so specific speed, specific speed is defined as the speed of a geometrically similar turbine which produces one kilowatt of power when works under a unit head. Okay, so this is uh, the definition of specific speed and uh, uh, for uh, Francis turbine, the specific speed um, is moderate and it is in the range of 50 to 50 meter. And finally, another specification of Francis turbine is your, uh, that it is a vertical shaft turbine. Vertical shaft turbine, uh, you can see in the figure, you can see in the figure, where uh, you can see the blue or arrow is actually showing the direction of water. So what is it actually entering in inside the runner section in radial direction? So after entering radial direction, it strikes the blade, and then the blade starts to rotate. And after rotation, the water comes out in uh, through uh, axial direction, and the shaft also rotates. And uh, with the shaft, the generator is being coupled, and subsequently the electricity is being generated. Next is your different uh, components of uh, Francis turbine. Uh, so different components, uh, is, it is similar to that of other turbines, but uh, the difference is being that okay, in uh, reaction turbines, along with the blades which are connected or uh, mounted over the periphery of the runner, some other things are also uh, being there, which are actually guiding the water to flow inside this um, actual blade. And those blades are or those veins are known as guide veins. So first year pen stroke. Pen stroke is that conduit uh, by which the water uh, actually is coming out from the reservoir to the turbine section. Then a spiral casing is there. Unlike the Pelton turbine where the casing is in type of bucket shape and the, the casing which doesn't have any hydraulic action, uh, where in case of Pelton turbine it only 
prevents the splashing of water after striking the blade. But in case of Francis turbine, the casing is a, of spiral shape, which is a, a close uh, passage of decreasing cross sectional area. Decreasing cross sectional area, the reason is that if uh, area is gradually decreasing, then the water which is coming from the casing towards the guide vein when it enters, it may enter with a uniform discharge. So that's why the cross sectional area is of spiral section. Then guide veins, the guide veins are responsible for guiding the water uh, to flow inside this uh, uh, runner blades, so striking the runner blades, and one governing mechanism is there. Governing mechanism is responsible for uh, governing the orientation or angle of the blade so that we can uh, manage the control of or can control the discharge of water which is going inside the runner. Now, the governing mechanism is required because suppose uh, in certain situation the turbine is rotating and suddenly the road requirement increases or the road requirement decreases. Accordingly, we have to increase or decrease the rotation of the shaft or rotation of the runner. Now, suddenly we have to do that. Uh, we cannot, uh, um, by hand, we cannot uh, change the um, amount of discharge which is going inside the power station. So rather than a governing mechanism is there, by operation of that, we are actually controlling the angle of the guide pins. Because as we have just mentioned, the guide pins are responsible to direct the water towards the runner, as well as if the angle of guide pins is being changed, then the passage will also change. If the passage will uh, change, then the amount of water, amount of discharge of water passing inside, going inside the runner, that will also change. Okay, so uh, the uh, function of governing mechanism is that. And finally, one of the important component of the reaction turbine is your draft tube, which is not there in case of impulse turbine. Now, draft tube uh, is actually a diffusing section which is connected at the exit of the uh, runner section. Now, in case of um, uh, reaction turbine, we know that uh, the pressure energy as well as the kinetic energy is available at the inlet and outlet. Now, uh, in case of impulse turbine, what happens? In case of impulse turbine, the uh, kinetic energy at the excess of the kinetic energy, the runner rotates and the water which is coming out from the runner section, it doesn't have any energy at the atmospheric pressure, it directly goes to the tail race. But in case of Francis turbine, when the water comes out from the runner as it is causing pressure energy as well as kinetic energy, if we let the water to flow directly into the tail race, then the kinetic energy that is causing by the water, that will get lost. That will useful kinetic energy will get lost. We cannot uh, gain their kinetic energy in any way. So the scientists have thought, okay, why not we uh, join something by which we can regain their kinetic energy. And we, to regain kinetic energy and converting their kinetic energy into pressure energy, the only way possible is to connect a passage of diffusing section. Because in diffusing section, the area gradually increases. And if area increases, then the, at the expense of kinetic energy, kinetic energy converted to pressure energy. So we may increase the pressure energy. So the pressure energy and kinetic energy that is available at the exit of the runner, if we let the water to flow through this diffusing section, then that kinetic energy will convert to pressure energy and we can convert it into useful pressure energy. And when it will go to the tail race, the water will possess a high amount of pressure energy and that can be used later on in any other purposes. That is the main uh, function of uh, using draft tube in case of reaction turbine, both for the case of Kelton, uh, Francis turbine as well as Kaplan turbine. Next is your uh, parts of Francis turbine. So parts of Francis turbine in the figure, you can see the water is coming out from the pen stock and, and then it flows through the spiral casing. Uh, after spiral casing, then it flows, uh, goes to the guide mechanism, or even guide vein section. So the guide vein section, some stationary veins are there and the guide veins are there. The guide veins uh, guides the water to flow inside the runner. And in the runner section, uh, over the, over the periphery of the runner, the blades are being mounted and then it strikes the blades and the runner rotates. So these are the different parts of the Francis turbine. These are two views, front view and top view are showing. So our cross-sectional views are showing. So here uh, the draft table has also been shown. 
So the water is coming, you can see the blue lines that shows the water is coming in the real direction. And after uh, the rotation of the runner, the water comes out in the axial direction and through the draft tube, it goes to the tail race. So radial flow direction uh, and uh, exit is in axial direction. So it is a mixed flow turbine. And so the draft tube water comes out to the tail race. Next, uh, in parts of Francis turbine, this is actually the radial view of the runner guide mechanism is being shown, where the um, different diameters of uh, are being mentioned and the um, guide veins as well as the runner and the runner veins, those uh, have also been shown. You can see the blue lines, actually the water line, the water which is uh, flowing along the uh, stay veins and then it passes through the guide veins. So the guide veins actually that can change its orientation that the angle of the guide veins will change uh, and along with that the path through which the water is going inside the runner that will also change. So in this way we can actually manage the discharge of water which is passing inside the runner. Next is your uh, reworking of Francis turbine. Uh, somehow I have already uh, described this thing. So here it is being mentioned that the water enters the turbine through the outer periphery of runner in the radial direction and leaves the runner in axial direction. That is known. And the pressure had goes on decreasing, obviously, because uh, this pressure will also be responsible for rotation of the runner. So the available pressure at the outlet of the runner, that will be less than the pressure available at the inlet of the runner. And the static pressure of the runner exit that may be less than the atmospheric pressure and such water fills all the passages of runner bridge. This is one of the important points we know in Pelton turbine it is not necessary to submerge the water uh, turbine in water because in, uh, the, when the water uh, striking the blades it is in atmospheric condition atmospheric pressure condition and also when the after the striking water water comes out from the runner section that is also in atmospheric pressure condition but in case of reaction turbine the pressure at the outlet of the runner that may fall below the atmospheric pressure so to, if it happens then there is a chance of backflow and cavitation so keeping it in mind, the uh, water fills all the passages of runner blades in case of uh, reaction turbine, basically in Francis turbine. And lastly, the point is that uh, the change in uh, pressure while water is gliding over the blades is called reaction pressure, as mentioned I've already, and that is partly responsible for rotation of the runner. And due to this, actually, this kind of turbines are known as reaction turbine. Okay. After this, any query, any question? I think very basic things are there. So, that uh, next is your uh, uh, the governing mechanism, as I have already mentioned. So this governing mechanism actually controls the angle of uh, attack of water on the blade that can be set, and at that particular situation only the turbine can work properly. Now, uh, yeah, initially the water passes from the blades and next later enters into the draft tube where uh, the continuous increment of area and decrement in the velocity of water can be noticed. Okay, these things I, we have already discussed. Next, your uh, advantage and disadvantage of your uh, Francis turbine. So uh, we can say the advantages are that uh, the in mostly uh, or widely it is being used for power generation and uh, almost in 70 to 80 percent of the application we can get the application of this kind of Francis turbine and uh, in case of Francis turbine the effective use of water pressure as well as velocity uh, those uh, pressure and velocity use those are being effectively used. And we get um, a higher amount of efficiency if we use the Francis turbine, almost 80 to 94 percent. And disadvantage is that uh, due to the complex geometry uh, or design of this uh, runner section, the cost becomes quite high. And due to its complex design, a large number of moving parts, maintenance and repair becomes difficult uh, because guide wings are there. We can man have to maintain the angle of the guide wings and runner sections are there, spiral casing draft. So um, parts are also moved and those are also complicated in nature. So maintenance is quite necessary, which will actually uh, increase the cost of this kind of turbine. 
and uh, finally you know these are applicable specifically for medium head only so if in any case the head availability is quite high or in case any case head availability is quite low in such circumstances we prefer to use pelton turbine or kaplan turbine so these are quite of the advantages and disadvantages of transistor turbine and uh, these are the efficiencies of uh, turbine so you know this thing uh, the four kind of efficiencies may be uh, defined for the turbine case one is your hydraulic efficiency then mechanical efficiency volumetric efficiency and overall efficiency so first of all hydraulic efficiency which is related with the hydraulic action of water so uh, water energy available at the reservoir and the uh, water power developed by the uh, runner due to the water action that ratio will actually giving you the definition of hydraulic efficiency so hydraulic efficiency that means output by input so in such circumstances out is actually the power developed by the runner and the input will be the power supplied by the water to the or power uh, supplied um, by the water at the inlet okay that will be the input so if we keep the ratio take the ratio of these two parameters that is power developed by the runner of a turbine to the power supplied by the water at the inlet that ratio is known as hydraulic efficiency then mechanical efficiency is related to the mechanical part so in mechanical part uh, in case of turbine we have that shaft power which is actually the output and the input will be the runner power okay so the power developed at the runner that will be the input so the def uh, definition of mechanical efficiency can be ha uh, we have the output output is the shaft power and input is the runner power so output or shaft power by runner power that will be your mechanical efficiency volumetric efficiency volumetric efficiency due to the volume of water uh, actually the water that is actually striking the runner and the volume of water actually supplied to the turbine that is different because in some circumstances there will be some leakage and some of the water may go directly to the tailless without even doing any useful work so keeping it in mind the ratio of the water actually striking the runner and the volume of water supplied to the turbine that ratio is known as volumetric efficiency and finally the overall efficiency overall efficiency in the turbine case the final output will be the shaft power because the shaft rotates and from that electricity is being generated so shaft power will be our final output and the water power which is available at the entry that will be our uh, input main input so the final output by the main input that will give you the overall efficiency so shaft power by the water power that will give you the overall efficiency okay now if we multiply the hydraulic efficiency and mechanical efficiency we will get the definition of overall efficiency so overall efficiency can be written as overall efficiency is equal to hydraulic efficiency and mechanical into mechanical efficiency these are the different efficiencies of a turbine now uh, we'll dis we'll discuss about the uh, governing of transistor turbine so we already have mentioned uh, the governing mechanism is required uh, so that the discharge of water inside the tunnel section that can be managed so the different components of the um, governing mechanisms are uh, oil pump or oil sump relay or control valve we can see in the figure servo motor or relay cylinder governor and linkages regulating ring and regulating rod actually the working of this kind of governing mechanism is exactly similar to that of governing of the pelton turbine only difference is that the uh, motion of this or the flow of this oil uh, actually control the motion of the uh, spear rod in case of pelton turbine because in the nozzle inside the nozzle there is a spear rod which uh, whose uh, hence uh, rightward and leftward motion actually increase or decrease the passage area of the nozzle by which you can control the discharge of water in case of impulse turbine but in case of reaction turbine rather than we need to control the angle of the right vane so that the discharge can be controlled so here uh, here also the motion of the centrifugal compressor and the oil motion finally actually you can say in the uh, relay piston the motion of the relay piston whereas in case of impulse turbine it controls the motion of the spear rod whereas here it controls the speed control wheel or uh, water uh, regulating ring so by controlling this uh, speed control uh, wheel or uh, the rack and pinion motion actually changes the um, uh, angle of the guide vanes and accordingly 
the uh, water motion or water discharge through the guide thing that can be controlled. So in this way, the governing mechanism of the Francis turbine works. Okay. Next, uh, related to Francis turbine, there are some recent advances. So recent advances we can mention as. Uh, new types of designs are developed uh, to reduce the uh, cost and complexity of the mechanism so that uh, it, the why, why why the use of this uh, kind of turbine may become more and second is modified turbine include inlet like uh, less francis turbine cross flow turbines okay uh, actually um, some of the turbines which are being modified keeping in mind that in any circumstances of head availability or discharge availability these turbines can be used so cross flow turbines which are most commonly used in case of village area and all, all where the availability availability of the water and all those things are quite not in the range where the Francis turbine or other kind of uh, conventional turbine can be used for that reason the use of cross flow turbine uh, are actually increasing day by day. And uh, thirdly, these new turbines because less space, simplified designs, and less moving parts. So, the new development and the new design turbines, uh, uh, as mentioned, as require less space, simplified design. Actually, the thing is that even if you see in new specific fluid mechanics laboratory, fluid machine laboratory, the may. Uh, Turbine supply unit, Francis turbine supply unit, Pelton supply supply unit, which was being installed earlier in our case, you know, in college, whenever we have studied those kind of, or we have performed the laboratory of, on those turbines, the setup was quite huge because in that case, the reservoir was on one part, the turbine section was another part, and one spring balance, weight spring balance, those kind of things were there. But now in my college at NIT in the turbine setup that we'll have, that all the things are being completed on tabletop type a turbine setup is there where the from the same source water is being coming through the pump and after striking it is going to the same source and we don't have to calculate the drop separately by using the wet spring balance rather than a digital param uh, box are there and digitally we get the values of torque and speed and uh, discharge all those things. So actually day by day with the advancements of the technology all those things that becomes more quite uh, easier to handle okay so these are the quite of the recent advances of, of francis turbine okay now these are a few of the concept of uh, francis turbine and after that we'll go for the discussion of the kaplan turbine so kaplan turbine is actually also one of the uh, example of reaction turbine so working and change of pressure availability of uh, energy at the inlet and outlet all those things are similar to that of francis turbine but the difference is that uh, in case of francis turbine or a kaplan turbine the runner section the extended runner section the shape or diameter suddenly increases and it takes the shape of one hub or boss and the blades are mounted over this periphery of the hub. And actually, the water enters inside the runner section after striking, it comes out axially. So, higher specific speed corresponds to lower head, and this requires that the runner should admit a comparatively large quantity of water. So, here, uh, as you know, for Pelton turbine, it is a high head, less discharge turbine, uh, and medium head, medium discharge is Francis, and one is your lower head, high discharge. So these things have been mentioned here. It is kind of uh, when large quantity of water is being required. And uh, for a runner of given diameter, the maximum flow rate is achieved when the flow is parallel to the axis. And such a machine is known as axial flow machine. And uh, Victor Kaplan, who is actually invented this kind of turbine after his name, this kind of turbine is known as Kaplan turbine. And it is being mentioned that an Australian engineer, Victor Kaplan, first designed Now, next is uh, the here, actually the evaluation of the Kaplan turbine from, of, from the transfer turbine that is being shown, the, how they actually, if it changes the direction of flow inside the runner, then how the velocity triangle changes and finally, what kind of uh, velocity triangles we get and what is actually advantages we are getting in case of Kaplan turbine. So here uh, you can see the first thing is France runner for low specific speed. 
for for this kind of uh, uh, turbine the angle you can see the angle beta 1 the angle beta 1 is in obtuse angle okay and when it becomes actually normal for normal spaces that is the radial intent uh, axial exit in case for that the angle the main angle beta 1 becomes 90 degrees and uh, for uh, the third case where for we have a high specific speed for that case we will have acute obtuse angle and in case of axial flow Kaplan turbine as the inlet at the entry the uh, entry is axial and exit is axial here you can see the alpha angle alpha angle becomes 90 degrees so you want it. Axial. Okay, so for you can see the evaluation of this uh, angle uh, L, uh, by your, uh, we have explained by using this velocity triangle. Okay. Next is ah, next is the overview of the Kaplan turbine. Now the Kaplan turbine, uh, we know, uh, is that development at the early of the 20th century, and uh, it is actually similar to the propeller type of uh, the propeller which is being used in the aeroplane. The blades of the Kaplan turbine are similar to that, and uh, the difference uh, of propeller turbine. Uh, difference of this propeller turbine uh, uh, and the Kaplan turbine is that in case of propeller turbine, the blades are fixed. And in case of Kaplan turbine, the blades are adjustable. So by this, using this adjustable blades, we can actually uh, control the flow, which is actually responsible for rotation of the runner. So it is being mentioned here, the difference between the propeller and Kaplan turbines are that propeller turbines uh, has fixed blade runner blades, whereas the Kaplan turbines uh, have the adjustable runner blades. And uh, they are 90% of battery efficiency. The efficiency is quite higher. Uh, and Kaplan turbine, unlike all other turbines, the runner blades are movable, as Josh I've mentioned. And these head availability is lower head availability is required, so 2 meter to 40 meter head are sufficient enough for running the Kaplan turbine. And the shape of the blade, and the shape of the blades that are actually made aerodynamically efficient. Uh, if the shapes are made aerodynamically efficient, then when the water will flow over the passage of the blade, then there will be less amount of losses. Now here, the uh, some empirical relation of uh, specific speed of the Kaplan turbine is given given by the scientist uh, Schweger and uh, Rogri. Uh, so these are the empirical relation based on the design parameters of the Kaplan turbine. Next, the schematic diagram of the Kaplan turbine has been shown. Uh, and these things actually we have already discussed the water is coming inside in axial direction and then striking the blades and then coming out in axial direction. These are the blades which is mounted over the hub of this uh, turbine and in, at the center the shaft is there. Shaft rotates and the generator also rotates. Now, one, one simple classification of Kaplan turbine is also available based on the thing that uh, a Kaplan turbine with adjustable runner blades and uh, uh, an adjustable guide fence is double regulated, while one with only adjustable runner blades is single regulated. Okay, so single regulated Kaplan turbine and double regulated uh, Kaplan turbines are being there, and the advantages of double regulated turbines are that they are being widely used. And uh, uh, the, the, it is being mentioned the percentage uh, range, those are there. The key double regulated Kaplan turbines can work between 15% and 100% of the maximum design discharge, whereas the single regulated turbines can only work between the 30% to 100% of the maximum design discharge. Okay. Next, uh, one of the important topics related to the reaction turbine is your cavitation. So cavitation, what is cavitation, how it occurs, I think and this is known to you. Uh, you know that when the, at a, uh, when the fluid flows and at a particular location, if the pressure drops below the vapor pressure, then the bubbles generated. And these bubbles also flows along with the fluid. And in any circumstances, if the pressure becomes higher, then these bubbles collapse and the cavity generates. And to fill the cavity, the fluid particles from all other sides come, and at the center of the cavity, all the particles strike with each other, and the pressure wave generates, which moves 
towards the wall of the pipe and the pitting sour generate and those are responsible for the corrosion of the um, plate. So those known as cavitation. And in case of Kaplan turbine, as well as Francis turbine also at the inlet of the runner and at the outlet of the runner where the pressure falls below the um, cavitation may occur. So the measure design criteria of the blaze to avoid the cavitation. And the, uh, and the main problem is uh, for this kind of uh, uh, tur turbine that the damage of the turbine parts, such as the blaze and all, so always try to manage those things. Okay. Now, in the next few slides, so we will show you some of the empirical relations uh, for the suction and, and other design parameters. So in the suction head also, <coughs> to avoid the cavitation and all, uh, we have to maintain or based on the cavitation factor, we have to maintain the suction head and this empirical relation so gives you that idea while designing the Kaplan turbine. Uh, these are the design of the guide wheel. So you can see in the figure, uh, the diameters are uh, been given and uh, the empirical relation based on the number of guide pins, which is being given by 60. AUG root over 2 gh by pi n. So, if by using those empirical relation, you can uh, go for designing the Kaplan turbine section. Yeah, these are the outlines of the Kaplan turbine. Uh, you can see uh, the water that is coming out through this uh, section, A section, and goes inside this. Uh, and the wheel chamber and guide points are there, and the space between the guide wheel outlet and the Kaplan runner is known as the wheel chamber. And the uh, empirical relation for these two sections has been given. Next is this uh, the empirical relation for the design of the half section and the runner diameter section. Okay. So these are not explanation for that. While designing, you can uh, display that uh, who have studied the machine design, you can, you know that some empirical relations we generally adopt while designing any section. So here also, if you go for any, any design of the Kaplan turbine runner, the half and base section, then these empirical relations will be necessary. Uh, as I, I will already mentioned, the hydrodynamics of the Kaplan turbine, those are important. Uh, uh, because while passing through the along the page, then over the tip when it flows from the leading edge to the tailing edge, so uh, the shape of the base should be aerodynamically efficient so that we can minimize the losses while passing through the, over the passage of the blade. Okay, so these are the uh, few things uh, of uh, Francis turbine and Kaplan turbine. Actually, I want to uh, say extremely sorry to all the participants because I didn't give you proper time because some more explanation was necessary in few of the slides. But as uh, I am in a situation where uh, some medical emergency are there, so I have to rush again inside the hospital. So for that reason, I couldn't give you the proper time. But I can give you one thing, and that uh, my contact number, my email ID, all those things are available to your organizing committee. Now, if any participants want to discuss anything about more advancement about this kind of turbine and other fluid machinery, then all are welcome, and you may contact with me at any time so that we can discuss these things elaborately uh, on later on. Okay. So today I cannot give you proper time for that. I'm extremely sorry. But I promise that in future, when I will get time, and if you contact with me, I will give you a proper time, and we'll discuss this thing elaborately. Okay. So for today's talk, uh, after this thing, thank you, thank you to all of you for listening patiently. The organizing committee of this five days national webinar is extremely thankful to Dr. Devoji Sahasat for his illuminating lecture, which is really uh, uh, helpful. Our beloved student has got immensely benefited from his valuable lecture. So uh, if any student want to ask anything uh, regarding this um, lecture, please, one by one, please, access no problem and uh, we are very 
grateful to you sir and in future also we will have some scope to invite you in some other webinar as well and we will keep in contact and yes, sure, sure, sure. Sure, sir, in collaborative research or anything any prospective research may come out in future also that will be also helpful to us our beloved student can also do some projects or internship in your place also your students may also come we will also help to us uh, them also and if you um, need any type of assistance from us also we will try our best uh, to uh, assist your students also if you that is also okay, you will be we are privileged to contact with you yes, and sir, uh, sir. Uh, always always sir. Sure, sir, please, please. and really we are extremely grateful to you sir that you in spite of this uh, that you yeah, so this i was also uh, preparing some more slides uh, where some other more informative information uh, would have been discussed but uh, i couldn't discuss those things so for that i'm extremely sorry but i as, as is, have already is nice because they are only undergraduate students based yes. on their requirement it is i think it is enough it is enough and also they will do the remaining part that students may also try their yes. best to search in some some open sources and they will develop their knowledge and thoughts and ideas okay yeah, and my you. contact number emails are there you may provide to the students so in future if students want to contact then they are always will and if any student want to ask anything to me also to share also please ask don't hesitate please so with this i would like to uh, hand over this microphone to one of our first year student uh, miss modhurima munshi konmokar to uh, give vote of thanks to dr devjit sahasar and also conclude this session thank you for your patience here thank you modhurima please thank you sir due to the long lasting pandemic situation and onerous measures such as lockdown and stay at home orders the covid-19 pandemic brings negative impact on student mental health due to covid many of the students are finding it difficult as environment outside has put a psychological pressure on students we have spent a lot of time in our home which has been a reason of boredom for many of us due to covid-19 distance have increased between professors and students we know how busy you are sir so on behalf of kuch bihar government engineering college management and all students i would like to extend my heartiest thanks to our honorable chief guest dr debojit chauhan sir for imparting such great knowledge to us thank you so much for inspiring and encouraging us with your words on this special day thank you sir thank you thank you very much uh, for inviting me as i again so i think i can leave now now okay i may leave sir thank you sir thank you sir okay. sure sir so uh, uh, we may conclude this session here but our next session uh, will be on fluid flow with combustion that will be presented by Uh, professor dr bijan kumar mondol sir from iiest sipur and this session will start from 3 pm uh, onwards so before uh, at least 5 minutes before i would like to uh, uh, request all of my beloved students to join the session at least 5 minutes before the schedule start at least 250 or 255 all of you should join so that we will listen Dr. Mondo Sir's lecture. So, thank you.